Okay, welcome everyone to the annual meeting for 2019. We appreciate you being here. So Bio Largo's got an exciting story to tell. And before we get into the detail of that, I, I really want to say thank you to you, of course, for all the support. We couldn't do it without you. But really, I also want to look back to the moment we had a chance to meet with our founder and inventor, Kenneth Ray Code, 2004, right? And we met this, this, uh, this man that had a vision, right? He could see, in, in many ways, see what others couldn't see. Uh, and I remember the first time I met him, he said, you know, we're going to have a chance to make an impact around the world. And the opportunities seem endless. They're not endless, but they seem endless. Uh, and we started a journey. We set out on a, a course to really do something special. I would argue, I'll propose to you, that we're doing something very special. It's also not easy. It's not for sissies. This is a business that is really all about innovation. And innovation, uh, we're being asked now as a result of our extended journey and our survival and now really achieving some level of significant success as it's coming about. We always say we're, we're in the process of arriving we're not fully arrived, but we're definitely arriving. And in, this, in the vein of innovation, it takes a lot of courage because when you're innovating, you're failing. In fact, you fail every day, and then you have to overcome your failure, right? So I think the testimony is two things, really. We've been able to assemble an incredible group of people, people that have exceptional talent, uh, subject matter experts, uh, people that are stubborn. They won't give up. They stay the course. Uh, the other is that we've got this technology, and I remember the first time I met Ken, you know, who had set out on this journey to help, to really help preserve his dad's life, his quality of life, keep him safe from infection. Remember that story? And I remember the promise Ken said to me. He said, the technology will never fail you, right? And that's proving out in our business, and it, it's not easy, but it's very exciting. So the evolution of the company has gone from really an idea to a technology to a product, to a solution, and to execution. It's taken a long time. I'd say in the last year, more than ever before, we're becoming known as an innovator and a solution provider. That's the key. Next. So we've got two operating units that are fully commercial and heading into profitability on a pretty good click. They're not there yet, but they're close. Uh, they're achieving uh, record results, and the records are continuing to stack up. We've got two other operating units that are very close to commercialization. They've got big milestones clicking off. And I'd say that the, the status of the company at the moment is when people study the business and they dig a little deep, the sentiment has gone from, I hope they make it, to, oh yeah, they're going to make it. And you see it in the way the stock trades, you see it in the way investment happens, you really see it in the culture of the company. This is, a, this is a confident group that now has a very clear vision about how to take technology into product, product into solution, solution into the market, and win, right? It's now an executable plan with very precise metrics that allow us to take capital, dedicate it to a specific resource, and go out and do something special. Next. We have a number of major highlights. As everybody knows, the odor business, odor and VOC business, run by Joe, I'm not going to steal all their thunder because they're going to all, all speak individually. But the bottom line is we've landed four of the top customers in the waste handling industry. Uh, they are adopting. We wish it was faster, but they're adopting. And, and we're winning in waves of momentum. And as that momentum occurs, we go from one account to five accounts to 10 accounts to 100 accounts. And remember when we started, we said, Earn their trust with a little, will be trusted with a lot. Everybody remembers that. We talk about it all the time. Why is that important? Because we set a mark when we started that business to focus on the number one customers in the world. And that's what we've got. We're not, we're not lacking customers. We're lacking infrastructure to properly serve and transition an account. It's now all about execution. We got a winner, now we just have to make it work, which we're doing. The engineering group, everybody saw the announcement this morning? It was a great event. Another Air Force contract. So where's Randy? There you go, Randy Moore. I'll have them all come up. Uh, so the engineering group, uh, as, I, as we say, they're getting their legs under them, right? Uh, it's about a year and a half ago we started the division. The focus for the engineering group 
is to do two things, right? Support internal development, support external clients, and then work on new development, new engineering opportunities that create what we think are massive commercial opportunities. Uh, we also were awarded an SBIR grant. Again, I'm not going to steal the thunder. It's an honor. An SBIR grant means that our team was selected as subject matter experts. They're, they stand out amongst the crowd. I want to say there was like 12 or 13 awards. So 12 or 13 companies in the entire United States got these awards. We've been asked to develop a solution to solve one of the most difficult water contaminants uh, that's the sort of the, the contaminant of the decade, as now highlighted in the media. Look up the word PFAS, PFAS, water contaminants. Google it. Take a deep dive. Look at what we're talking about. We're talking about contaminants that are not good. And we believe we may have a significant solution to offer for the marketplace. Phase one was 100,000. Phase two is coming up in about 60, 90 days. We're going to be a good competitor for phase two, which will be approximately a million dollar grant. We now have four demonstration pilots. Uh, two are active. The third just came online. We announced this morning another funding that got uh, approved by the government of Canada to sponsor stormwater treatment in Southern California. How's that? That's pretty good. Uh, 68 grants, grants and counting, and they're going up. The Clear, Clear is, Steve Harrison's here. Where's Steve? Steve's going to talk about Clear in a minute. Uh, Clear is an incredible journey of pain and suffering. <laughs> It's probably one of the most difficult things, really, we've ever been involved in. Uh, it's awesome. And our commitment is to win, and we believe we're about to win and win big. So Steve's going to talk about that. OK, next. So the, these are massive total addressable markets. That's the bottom line. I'm not, not going to read the slide to you. They're just big, OK? And if you think about it, again, our slogan is we make life better. So what are we doing? We're focused on things that move the needle. You know, move the needle for the world for good, a greater good. Move the needle with economic performance. And we're a tiny little company with incredible intellectual prowess. Subject matter experts at every level. We do what other people don't just dream of doing, frankly. And we do it well. The team is awesome, so we've made some introductions. Uh, and we'll take a, a, before we start the rest of the presentations, we'll take a break, make sure we get some introductions going. Uh, but most of these guys are here, and these people are here. Again, not going to read it all. Next. The collaborations are incredible. If you think about it, it's 10 years of work. Again, there's, there's 100 stories here, but the bottom line is it's taken us a lot of years and a lot of capital to get to the point where our claims are beyond reproach. And that's what they are. They're beyond reproach. When we make the claim, we specify technical performance, it is, a, it is a claim that we believe is uh, exceptionally high performance. As we say, we do the things no one else can do. We, we raise the bar incredibly high, and we dig, and we dig, and we dig until we find the solution to solve those issues. Um, most notably, about a year ago, we were innovator. We won a high-tech innovation award by Octane in the local market. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. This is a big place. Orange County is a big place, right? Six million, three and a half million people, big companies. We were competing with some of the biggest established companies, but we're chosen as the innovator, doing, again, doing something remarkably special. The other is the Metropolitan Water District. They've been great. We've had two grants from them to sponsor pilot work. It's a big deal. Metropolitan Water District of Southern California is the number one producer of drinking water in the world, if you don't know that. It's a big deal. And so, again, it's advancing our credibility with performance that can solve things in the market. INSERC, I can't go without mentioning INSERC. INSERC is our National Science and Engineering Research Council of Canada. It's our number one benefactor for third party research work. Uh, total capital uh, grants has come in about three million in addition to our invested capital to get this technology seated for the water technology. Okay, so let's go to the next one. So, you know, what are we gonna do, right? We're gonna start, we're gonna start the presentation. What, what's, what's coming? Because it's really important. And we can see our odor and VOC business really escalating sales as we're investing in more infrastructure, which we're going to talk about as well. It takes people. The order just doesn't happen. You have to go out and do it. You have to serve a customer, transition an account, do some provisioning, do engineering, do the transition, teach the customer, make sure they do it well so that we get the performance. It's a lot of work. And what we've learned, of course, is the transition from a yes 
is probably three to six months before you get your first order. It's a lot of work. The good news is, once you get it, you're probably going to serve them for 20 to 30 years. It's an incredible business, and we are dislodging companies that have been there for 20 and 30 years. The engineering group, uh, and, and the, oh, and all, by the way, the cannabis industry, right? So it turns out, of course, we eliminate the terpenes from, from cannabis production. We're just tiptoe in the water, okay? But many people think that the opportunity for this tech, our technology in that space is an astronomically significant opportunity. And so now it's all about how do we enter, how do we become an insider, what's the, uh, what's the methodology by which we capture market share. So that's underway. We'll talk more about that. Grow the engineering base, customer base. They're on it. It's already happening. You saw it this morning. The opportunities are really expanding rapidly because the base is, is sort of now solidified. If you think about these contracts, they provide a five-year economic support that means that incremental business is, has a high profit margin. You don't make a ton of money on the first ones, but you make money on the next one, and you make money on the next one because you've got fixed overhead. Biolargo has been the f capital supplier for this business. So the idea that now there's a base of business that forecasts out for a five-year term means that that business is situated to now escalate sales and take care of clients throughout the world. FDA, Steve Harrison, going to get that FDA approval. Got a couple acquisitions we're talking about. The skin disc is now we very well positioned for uh, launching into the commercial market. Again, I don't want to steal any thunder, but this is a very dynamic business. And then, of course, the water. We've got a couple of pilots. It's now all about automation, refinement, to make sure that that technology is well situated for a commercial launch. And we'll talk specifically about the business plan itself. Here's Joe, Pro Joe Provenzano with Odor No More. Thank you guys for coming. To reiterate what Dennis said, we really appreciate all of you guys, and uh, we couldn't do it without you. So thank you so much for coming. Uh, I got a brief presentation. Most of what I'm going to show you is, uh, is images of the work that we're doing in the field. And then I have some videos that we've shot that some of you may have seen, and some new ones in relation to how the chemistry is deployed in the environments that we operate in. Before we go to that, I, I think it's, it's very worthy of introducing my team to you guys, because uh, this is our domain. We operate out of this facility. So fortunately for all of us, they're all present. Um, I'm going to start with Tama Tracy. Tam is our, our administrator. So if, if any of you guys call in and are trying to reach anybody within the company, it's Tama's voice that's on the other end of the line, typically. Um, she's a huge support system for us and essentially runs the office and the operations in the facility. So uh, we can't do without her, and I, I appreciate her. Uh, next, I want to introduce AJ Sexton. AJ is our VP of International, uh, International uh, Industrial Sales. Um, <clears throat> if you don't know AJ, make sure that you get to know him. He's uh, some kind of special, I guess. Uh, and, and, and AJ and I are essentially partners in this deal. When AJ came on and said, hey, I'll, I'll take the ride with you, uh, we, uh, we strapped our arms together and we kind of walked through the journey together. So he's a, a big help and we can't do without him. Bonnie Guthrie's in the back next to Tama. She's our in-house accountant. Um, no small task for Bonnie. Uh, she's integrating each individual business unit. So the goal here is to bring all of our accounting internally, and Bonnie's starting that process. She handles all of Odor No More's accounting, all of Blessed's accounting, and we'll be transitioning some of the other divisions as well as the parent company under her supervision uh, over time. And we don't want to give her too much too fast. Um, Cody Songer. Cody is our install and field supervisor, install and service supervisor. Uh, he's never here because he's usually up to his knees in trash or wastewater or gravel or something that's the really dirty jobs. Uh, Cody has a particular expertise um, that gives us the ability to be able to service customers all around the country and provide a complete turnkey solution. Uh, so I don't care if it's uh, high pressure misting for odor control or they need a litter fence. Cody has the capability and the skill set to do it. Uh, he's surrounded by some other guys, so we have contractors we work with. Cody is a general contractor, an electrician, licensed electrical contractor, as well as a licensed low voltage contractor. So those licenses were brought to the company when Cody joined our team. So he's our, now our qualified employee for all those licenses. Uh, Robert Rodriguez. Robert is a fairly new addition to the team. Uh, Robert uh, primarily focuses now on local customer sales and service. Uh, and he's kind of a jack-of-all-trades, so 
when, when the order's back up, Robert rolls up his sleeves like he is today, uh, and he'll get out here and help us with the manufacturing. Um, and that kind of goes for the rest of the team as well. If we need support here to fill orders and service customers, we all just kind of, you know, I don't wear a suit normally, obviously. So we all just kind of dive in and we can make it, we make it happen. Uh, Levi Rodriguez. Levi's our warehouse supervisor. Um, if the production load is not too heavy, it's Levi that handles it. So when you send an email or you say, hey, can I get some samples? I want to try that stuff. Levi's your guy. Okay. And then our newest addition, I want to introduce Mitch Noto. Yeah. Mitch is a big deal for us, just so everybody understands. I'm, at the end of when I'm done here, I'm actually going to give Mitch a couple seconds just to kind of give you his take on the business and where he sees it going and why he joined our team. Uh, if those of you that don't know Mitch, which most don't, Mitch spent 28 years with the number two waste handling company in the world, um, all the way up through the chain to one of the senior executive levels. Uh, he decided to come join our team, and I'll let him explain why, but we're, uh, we are honored and pleased that Mitch is able to join our team. Mitch is going to uh, work side by side with AJ, and they're going to go get every customer in the United States in the next 30 to 45 days. <laughs> Kidding. No pressure. No pressure, guys. All right. So here we are, Odor No More. Um, you, all, everybody, I think, knows me. I'm the president of Odor No More. Um, slide. Our primary focus today is on, um, as a company, is on our Cooperdine Clean Industrial Odor and VOC Eliminator product. Most of you guys know it. Um, We've got adoption by the top four waste players in the space, one of them being Mitch's previous employer. That's how he found out about us. Um, the bottom line is, is that we reduce the cost to the customer and we actually perform. So to kind of give you a general overview, the competitors in our space typically use fragrances, so they try to change the trash smell to cherries or change the trash smell to honeysuckle, something other than trash. Uh, we're ag exactly the opposite of that. We don't rely on fragrances, we're actually eliminating the odorous compounds through oxidation. So it's very unique in the industry. Um, the industry is somewhat jaded and has kind of been beat up a little bit by the odor control industries, uh, companies. Um, basically really expensive products that don't perform that well. Uh, so we've come in and kind of shifted that whole paradigm. We're gonna give you a product that actually works and we're gonna do it very cost effectively. And as a result, we're able to get the adoption. Uh, the, as Dennis had mentioned, the adoption cycle is not fast, uh, but when you get a customer, they're ecstatic with what they get from you and our goal is to serve the customer to the best of our ability. So if they call and say, I need a fence built, I call Cody and say, Cody, guess what? You're building a fence tomorrow. And Cody says, well, that's not odor control. I say, I don't care. Our job is to serve the customer, right? If there's money to be made and we have a customer, we're going to take the opportunity and go leverage it. So the first install uh, that I'm going to show you, this is, um, uh, so the next few slides are design, build, and install systems that we've done. Uh, and it just kind of shows uh, our expertise, something that we've gained over the past couple years, uh, which is essential to the industry. You know, when you go out and you say, we got this great product, please use it. The customer says, I'd love to use it, but how? I have a system that's 20 years old, it stopped working 10 years ago, or I have no system. And so we started the install and service division to accomplish that, to be able to serve that customer, um, give them the ability to buy our consumable product by buying the hardware to deploy it. So this system, um, just briefly, is, uh, is a very large system. Uh, this is in Corona, California. It's a large landfill out there. This, uh, this is what they consider to be their litter fencing. And so we put um, 2,500 feet, Cody. These 2,500 feet of line and about approximately 230 spray nozzles on this system. Uh, this was about a three-day install. Um, it runs on a really large uh, pump and motor. So that's a 10 and a half ho horsepower motor. Uh, pump. So this is the type of system that we install. What's not in the image is the actual shed where the system goes. So this system goes in, uh, it feeds our chemistry through a dosing system into these lines, and these lines are on the perimeter of the landfill. So it catches trash in the fence, and it deli uh, delivers odor control to the top of the fence line. Uh, on the right-hand side of the picture, on the, on the left, is the actual working face of the landfill. On the left-hand side is this real steep drop and then there's homes in the canyon down there, and that's where the odor complaints are being generated, the people that live down that hill. What's interesting is there's only six or seven houses down there, but that's enough to make problems for the landfill. Three, four, five complaints, and then complaining over and over again. The next thing you know, the air quality management district's coming out. They're issuing them notices of violation, which costs money. They're issuing them, if it escalates beyond that, they issue what they call an abatement order, which could be anything from limiting the amount of trash they take in to limiting the number of hours they operate in a given day. 
which obviously equates to money for the operation. So odor, while odor doesn't seem like a big deal in the operations of, of a landfill or a transfer station, a waste handling facility, it actually has significant impact on their ability to generate revenue. So it is a critical component. Next slide. So this is a new thing we developed. We were asked by one of the big companies, and you notice I don't mention them by name because they really don't like us to mention them by name, so we kind of talk around as opposed to identify them in specific. But uh, the challenge at this facility uh, and other facilities around the country, this is the one where they asked us to do it run our trial at, was they have to clean these dumpsters and the big roll-offs, and um, it was a five-step process when we walked into the door and it took them up, sometimes up to eight hours to turn one of these units around, which obviously equates to a lot of money. So they, they, they asked us, is there something that you can do to accelerate this process? And that was the task, to accelerate the process exclusively. So what we did is we developed a version of the Cooperdine Clean that's got a, more, a higher surfactant load so we can remove dirt from the surface. Um, and so we have a, what we call a, a wash product now. Uh, this is a high pressure pressure washer system with a heat component, so it pushes out hot water at high pressure. And typically what they do is they'll use a degreaser, a soap, a deodorizer, and then they'll rinse it. So when we stepped in, we said, well, there shouldn't be any reason why we can't just turn it into a single step. Our product will clean and it will deodorize, and you don't have to rinse it out. So why wouldn't you just inject our stuff right into your pressure washer and go in and spray it down and be done? So we ran this trial for 30 plus days, it was extremely successful. All the guys, like the guy in the picture on the right, the guys that actually get dirty, and in this case, really wet, um, all came back and said, this is amazing. You've cut our five-step process down to one step. So that's the time savings. In addition to that, they were spending on average about $10 in chemistry per dumpster. We reduced that down to $6. So there's a cost savings feature as well, which is, was unexpected to them uh, and, and obviously a huge win for them. So that's ongoing now. That, that operation has switched from a trial to a using customer. And um, we've had to report back to corporate with the results. So we presented them, you know, we gave them a presentation and said, this is what happened. And uh, we believe that the next step is to start rolling this out strategically around the country to change the way that they clean these dumpsters and roll offs. So this is a very interesting, very cool. Um, and the opportunity is big. I mean, it expands. Uh, it expands our odor control opportunity to a cleaning and odor control to another segment. So this would be the hauling division versus the disposal divisions of these big companies. So we're kind of working our way into new divisions with these big players. And that kind of goes to serving the customer and doing everything we can with each individual customer to make sure we're maximizing, maximizing the customer, right? Next slide, please. Uh, this is an exhaust duct where they're separating the liquid from the solids. Um, coming out of that duct, they had 55% volatile organic compound emissions as tested by the Air Quality Management District. In fact, two of the uh, engineering contractors on site doing some work were actually taken to the hospital via ambulance from exposure. Uh, they called us and said, we need help. So we measured the duct at 55% emissions. We flipped the switch and turned the Cooperdine Clean on in that exhaust ring that you see inside the duct. And the emissions went to less than 1% and have maintained less than 1% consistently. So as long as that system is running, the emissions are well below the legal limits. Uh, and that's very significant for that industry. Next slide. This is a, one of our newest installs, uh, and it's somewhat unique. It's our first endeavor into not delivering odor control, but for cooling. Uh, so this is what they call a MRF, a materials uh, reclam uh, recl recovery. Thank you. Mercuri <laughs> uh, materials recovery facility. And they're sorting trash and recyclables here. Uh, we were contacted because we do odor control for this company, but they said, we built this brand new MRF and we need to keep the guys cool. So we designed a system that had oscillating fans and misting nozzles, so we're spraying just water, um, but it's not getting anything wet, and it's reducing the temperature in that building signif I mean, significantly, because like this warehouse, it's not a climate-controlled environment, so we're controlling the climate um, by using fans and water, uh, and of course, they got a lot of heavy equipment running in there, so the heat gets really high. And that was just completed about a week and a half ago, right, Cody? A week and a half ago, I think. Yeah. So that system turned out really well. Next slide. In fact, uh, you don't have to go back, Robert. But on that job, once we completed that system, about two days later, I got a call and they said, okay, we need another system for odor control now in a separate part of that facility. So they're obviously pleased with our performance and, and we want another, I don't know, ten dollars or $12,000 uh, installation from that one. Uh, this is a wastewater treatment plant. 
uh, where the tanks are covered. So these are aeration basins where they're aerating the water and feeding microbes. Um, this is down in South County, and they were getting a lot of odor complaints from pretty high-end homes surrounding the facility. Uh, they called us in and asked if we could help. So what you see in these images is uh, our misting lines, connections, and so we basically have nozzles inside of those pipes where you see the black plugs, and that's spraying odor control down into the basin. Um, and uh, their complaints have gone away as a result of the installation of our system out there, and they're very pleased, of course. Okay, this is unique. So everybody, if you don't recognize this, this is a portable AOS unit. Richard, Randy. So um, I got a call from our other division saying, hey, we got an install in, in, uh, by Palm Springs. Uh, actually, it's uh, Joshua Tree. And they said, do you think your crew can go out and install the system? I said, yeah, Cody can do anything, right, Cody? <laughs> so uh, Randy's team, uh, obviously Richard's team, generated the, the, the trial site, uh, designed, uh, planned what the strategy was. Randy's team designed and constructed the system, then deconstructed it and shipped it out to us. Uh, we took it to site and then installed it. So you see Cody and I and our, another employee who's on the road now, Derek Stuckey, he's our licensed plumber are in putting the system back together with guidance from Randy and his team and um, getting it ready to operate. So that is a portable AOS unit, a o a o a o -S unit with three canisters and then a recapture canister. Is that right, Richard? All right, right. So those are the two-inch columns? Those are two-inch columns. Right, chamber reaction. So uh, that is not, I don't think, the first deployment of an AOS in a pilot, but it's, it's one of the first two or three, right? Yeah. So that was interesting. I enjoyed working on that one. And uh, I think Richard or Randy may talk a little bit, but we're going to end up having one of those systems here in our warehouse to do some testing on that Southern California stormwater as well. So I wanted to throw that slide in there because uh, I'm proud of it, one, and I think it's a, a good example of what a portable AOS system, AOS system looks like. Very small footprint, very high power and effective. OK, before we go to the next slide, the next slide is going to run four or five videos simultaneously. There's no audio with them because there's the volume's all different and things of that nature. So we just ran without audio, and I'll just kind of explain what they are. And most of you may have actually seen this slide. Go ahead. So the first picture is a company that cleans trash rooms and high rises. So he's got Cooper 9 Clean and a backpack sprayer, and he's, that is actually a grease trap. So they spray that all throughout the trash room, inside the dumpster, inside the grease traps, up in the chute, the trash chutes. Uh, and that customer has tripled their customer base in the last two years since they've started using our chemical. Uh, they touted it is more effective than anything they've ever used, and uh, they're able to leverage that up to generate more clients. Uh, the, second, the second video, which already ran, I guess they should have been on a loop, but uh, is spraying our chemistry out of a water truck directly on the working face of a landfill. So this is one of the deployment methods that is unique to our chemistry. Um, there aren't many competitors, if any, in fact, that have the ability to deliver a powdered solution that they can just add to an existing water truck and spray it out on the working face. The third one is a bio sludge from a wastewater treatment plant. And they're spraying that down and eliminating the odor once it's dumped on a landfill. The fourth image are air cannons, which are commonly used. They're deploying our chemistry into the air uh, in the direction where the winds channel through uh, a particular site to oxidize the odors in the air as it passes through. Over that ridge behind that cannon is actually a school and a track of homes. And uh, they, get a, they were getting a lot of complaints uh, we've done a really good job, along with their staff, at reducing those odor complaints uh, substantially. I mean, they were getting 1,000 plus complaints a year, and I think they're well below 100 now. Uh, and then the right one is that air duct that you've seen. Okay, next slide. Next slide. There you go. Okay, so the left one is the air units that we were talking about. Okay, we just talked about that new customer. I don't know why the videos are struggling. Uh, it may be the translation to the projector. This middle unit is a gr actually a green waste facility. Note all the trash in the green waste. That's how they receive it typically. Um, and they're spraying it directly out of a water truck through a hose, spraying down the hot spots, what they determine as hot spots, uh, on the facility. The one on the right is another wastewater treatment plant where we deployed a uh, misting system around the perimeter. Um, and again, their, their odor complaints went all but away. Okay. So again, this whole presentation will be available to everybody, so you'll be able to play the slides individually and watch the videos at your own leisure as well. Next slide. 
All right, so the market opportunity. Um, it's big, I think, as Dennis alluded to. I won't cover all of it. It's all here for you to read, but it's big. This is a, a billion plus, pushing $2 billion market opportunity uh, for odor and VOC control. Um, so we're barely scratching the surface now. Um, I th I, the way I look at it is I think we've, we've established a proof of concept and validity of the performance of the product, and we've secured some of the large customers, and now it's about going and getting them and starting, starting to get them to pay us on a regular basis. Um, obviously, we have paying customers now, but uh, we're just barely scratching the surface of the opportunity that we've, uh, that we've uh, opened up. Next slide, please. So again, I won't go into all the detail, but this is kind of the breakdown of the, um, what we consider to be the revenue potential on the different types of sites in the waste handling industry exclusively. And uh, all this stuff will be available to you, but I think the bottom line is this shows it's in the waste handling industry, it's about a $1.3 billion market opportunity. Next slide. Cannabis. Uh, Dennis touched on it. Uh, my take on it is uh, it's a very difficult industry. The growers, your customer base is very technical. So you think, oh, these are just guys out there growing pot. Well, no, they're not. They are very technical farmers. Uh, if you look at it from the perspective of the crop that they grow is probably the most valuable crop there is to grow. Uh, Everything associated with that kind of falls in line. Very, very technical. Uh, so we're going through some validations. Uh, go ahead and click to the next slide, please, Robert. This was some work that um, Randy and his team did at, at Biologer Engineering along with, uh, along with Southern Air Solutions. And what they were testing is, is does Cooper and Clean actually oxidize the terpenes? So if you remember what I said about most of the competitors in the space are adding fragrances to change the, the odor profile, well, we're not. We're eliminating those things. In the instance of terpenes, what this actually shows is if you see the peak, this is the pretreatment peak. So this is limonene and myrcene, which are the two of the prominent uh, terpenes associated with cannabis. And then post-treatment, you notice, that, which is the red line, there is no peak. Right? So what that, what that basically says is that we've eliminated that terpene. And I think we've shown essentially 100% elimination, right? We've completely eliminated the terpene. And I think Randy's got more to speak on the cannabis space as well. Uh, his team has been instrumental in, in the cannabis space for us and validating what we think we're doing. Um, it is an emerging market for us, um, but we've really got our hands full with our waste handling industry, so we don't want anything to fall short on there. We're not going to get distracted. We're going to stay focused. And the strategy here is to bring in partners to, to leverage our technology in this space. Uh, we do have a distributor on board now that's just starting to get their feet wet and introduce the product to the marketplace. And then on the back end, we're supporting them to, with technical support, sales support, and all those kinds of things. I think that's it for me. Next slide. All right. I think Randy's next. And then, I, as Dennis said, at the end, we'll all be here, and we're happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate you guys coming out. A uh, couple of caveats before we get started. Uh, one, following Joe. Uh, okay. Yeah, following Joe is a uh, is a tough act to follow because somebody that's managing a business that's doubling revenue on a monthly basis, that doesn't happen in any business I've ever been associated with. So, yeah, that's a tough act to follow. So, secondly. Dennis told me you got seven minutes. I'm from the South. It takes seven minutes for me to say good morning. So, but we're gonna to try to go through this as quickly as we can. Uh, you know, most of our folks have had 30 plus years experience in the engineering business. We've, we've been with, uh, formerly with Chicago Bridge and Iron, which bought the Shaw Group, which bought IT Corporation. So we have been in the environmental business for three plus decades, uh, but that, although that's what we focus on and where a lot of our revenue comes from, we have had the opportunity to play in a lot of different markets. Uh, we have designed and built major pieces of equipment. Uh, we were involved with, years ago, we were involved with designing, building, operating a hazardous waste incinerator that, that destroyed all the dioxin in Times Beach, Missouri. And so that was a $220 million uh, incineration project. Uh, later on, we were involved in the, des in the design, installation, operation of a basically a portable chemical plant to remediate the anthrax uh, damage caused by the anthrax attack 
uh, on Washington, D.C. in Brentwood, uh, Senator Daschle's office, uh, and, and in Trenton. So even though we're environmentally focused, that's not, that's just touches a little bit of what we were capable of doing. And so we appreciate one thing, being part of BioLargo, is being able to exercise some of the previous history we've had, that experience, to make the products that we have within the company and the technology we have work better, work longer, be cheaper, better, faster, cheaper, make a better product. So, next slide. Okay, the, this is uh, our SBIR grant that we received, oh, about three months ago. Uh, Dennis touched on the PFOS compounds, which is poly or perfluorinated alkyl compounds. It's, as Dennis mentioned, it's the compound of the decade. You know, we, every, seemingly every decade, EPA comes out with a new pollutant that becomes a big deal. Right now, it's PFOS. Now, the trouble with PFOS is that, one, the toxicity or the perceived toxicity starts very low levels. There are no standards as yet, but EPA is about to pass a standard of 70 parts per trillion. So that's roughly equivalent if you took, if you took a stadium, say the size of Pasadena, you filled it with ping pong balls, 70 parts per trillion would represent less than one of those ping pong balls in the whole thing. So the big, you know, one of the big problems is how do you find it, how do you analyze for it, you know, if it's there, what do you do with it? The other problem is the stuff is everywhere. If you get a new Teflon line skillet, you get a new nonstick skillet, you cook something in it, you rinse that water out into a glass, that glass has got more than 70 parts per trillion PFOS in the water. So that, that alone would cause that water to not comply. So that, you know, big, big issues, you know. And the third, we're not really sure, you know, the industry and, and EPA and not really sure what all the health effects are, but they include potentially liver, liver disease, kidney disease, cancer, so it's a big deal uh, from a pollutant standpoint, and we've gotten, you know, we've gotten the grant to come up with a technology to, in our case, try to concentrate that technology. Our phase one grant was proof of concept. Initial studies indicate that our device works, uh, so given the results of that, we'll use that to apply for the second stage grant, which we'll apply for in September, should be awarded in the spring, could be up to a million bucks of, uh, of research grant, uh, and that helps us take it to commercialization. The potential market for that is essentially every military base in the country has contaminated PFOS water underneath the base in the groundwater. In addition to that, right now, municipal uh, water treatment systems have no mechanism to treat for this compound. So, you can look at the, at the potential client base, you know, is every military installation in the country, every municipal water supply in the country. So if we can make this thing work, we should be able to find a client. So, next slide. Okay, significant wins uh, that, we, that we've had lately. Uh, see the, the first one is uh, not too far from here, at least as the crow flies. Uh, there is a uh, 1.1 million tons of industrial tailings sitting, on, sitting in 46 acres, a 46 acre site. About uh, 36 acres of that, 50 foot deep, is this mag magnesium rich process tailings. It's been uh, accumulating since 1950 through about the mid 1990s. Uh, the, the issue is they can't use that site to build anything else on until they do something with the mess that somebody else made. Uh, the advantage is, is that mess may be worth a couple hundred million dollars if they can find a way to use that material, uh, refine the material that they have, re pick out the, uh, the brew site, which is the saleable product out of it, refine it enough to make it a saleable product. We have a contract to one, to find what's there, figure out what to do with it, find a customer for it and do a feasibility study. So our end goal here, if we can refine the product, and it looks like we can, is to offer the client the opportunity for us to design, build, and operate a system on their site 
and we would you know, sell, you know, process the product for sale for a percentage of the sale, plus the fee for designing and building the plant. So we'll see where that goes, we're hopeful. Uh, the second one, let's see that, uh, yeah, the second bullet uh, is incorrect. You'll see where, where we, uh, we've won two Air Force contracts. Uh, that's now three Air Force contracts. On the plane ride out here, I got notice that we've won the third contract. So we now have three Air Force fence-to-fence -fence, uh, environmental compliance contracts. We're teaming with uh, four different, four, well, three other companies. Uh, we have uh, Bate, who is, is the, the lead. Uh, they will handle the contract management plus handling uh, wastewater, water problems on the bases. A company called Hastrain will do hazardous waste. We'll be responsible for all the air quality compliance on now Air Force bases, three in Texas, two in Arizona, one in Indiana, one in Kansas. So we've got seven Air Force bases who are responsible for the air quality uh, for. Total contract values of, of, of all of those to be split among the four, four uh, companies uh, is just over $17 million over five years. So it gives us a great base load and something from which to build. So, and you know, these fence to fence contracts, the way the Air Force does their environmental compliance, uh, the ones we've done so far have been on a state by state separation. So every state that has Air Force bases will be letting these contracts out periodically. Uh, what we've been told by Bate is we have eight to nine RFPs coming in for nine more opportunities just like these three. So, so far we've won three out of four. Uh, it would be, you know, if we were to win that same uh, ratio out of the next eight or nine, then we then we're going places and in a hurry. So, we're owners engineer for uh, for a company uh, out of Virginia that is going to install a a system that will take municipal waste uh, trash basically and convert that into a number of saleable products, including alkanes, uh, which be synthetic gasoline synthetic diesel fuel, waxes. So that, pro that project is moving forward. We're continuing to do upfront work for them. As soon as they get the funding for their bridge loan to do the engineering, we'll be hitting that full force, hopefully within the next six months or so. And then the final one is uh, an old existing client of ours, Picatinny Arsenal, uh, which we have worked for in, other, uh, in our former life for the last 20 years. This year is their year to do a, a RICRA trial burn, which is a, a major, uh, basically a major stack test. It'll be about $550,000 uh, for, this, for this piece. We expect the contract to be awarded sometime in September. We'll be hitting, hitting the ground running on that uh, during the fall, and it'll execute next year. Next slide. Uh, the cannabis opportunity. Uh, Joe pointed out uh, some evidence, some evidentiary slides talking about uh, how Cooperdine Clean uh, can, uh, can destroy the terpenes. Uh, this is an issue, uh, for instance, in Denver, you know, where cannabis has been legal a little longer even than it has in California. The grow houses in Denver have contributed to the doubling of ground level ozone uh, in the city. So the, the grow houses have made the air in Denver uh, difficult to breathe for anybody with asthma, any kind of lung issues. Uh, that sort of thing is going to has already started happening and is going to exacerbate in California. What they do now is use activated carbon units to try to pull the terpenes out of the gas stream. For various reasons, that has proven more or less completely ineffective. So what we have got is the opportunity to design and build a new type of scrubber system that involves two stages, one first stage being a water stage that will get most of the terpenes out. The second stage will be using Joe's chemistry, uh, using the Cooperdine Clean, and effectively removing all the terpenes from the exhaust gases from the grow houses. Cleans the air, does, for, does it better, faster, cheaper than the competition. So we'll be uh, designing and building prototypes of that scrubber, and we hope to have it ready for commercial offering within six months, maybe sooner if the opportunity presents itself. So, 
Next slide. The uh, yeah, storm op stormwater opportunities that, uh, that, that we're looking at, uh, Joe and, and the team here has, uh, has a, a third party that has been using their, uh, their chemistry as a pretreatment step in wastewater. So what we're looking at is using the AOS technology, not specifically as a water treatment device, but as a means to introduce cuprodyne at a measured rate as a pretreatment step into stormwater. What's happening here in California, and Richard Watson will be here uh, for the social later, uh, he is heavily involved in, the in projects where the rainwater, you know, stormwater is collected, treated, stored, and used for non-potable sources uh, here in California. So it's, it's becoming a big business, and our, our opportunity to be a piece of that business using Joe's chemistry is, is coming, to the front, coming to the fore. So. We'll be able to, to pursue that uh, this fall and hopefully have a unit ready to go in the spring. So. Okay, the takeaways, uh, you know, what, what I've talked about, uh, you know, I could get up here and talk for an hour about what we've got going on. This is 5% of what's happening at Blessed. Uh, but one, Dennis would hit me with a stick, uh, and, and two, you guys would start snoring so we don't want to do that, but the takeaways are we got a lot going on, and you know the re potential return for all these projects to the shareholders can be significant. Nothing like doubling every month like Joe's been doing, but definitely significant for the company, and uh, we look forward to that challenge and that opportunity. And first, we you know, and we appreciate the investors and your faith in, in our capabilities and what we're doing, and we and we you know. Above anything else, we, we appreciate your trust and our stewardship with your investment. So thanks a lot. And I'll turn that back over to Dennis. Go. OK, next slide. <clears throat> so some of what we covered are the, the game-changing nature of what we have with Clearum. It's novel, it's new, which I'll echo something that Dennis said earlier, it's hard. And when, you're, when you have something that's novel and not well understood by, say, a federal agency like the FDA, it's really hard. So this has been a long journey for us, it's been difficult. I think we're right there. And we've given them everything they've asked for because they didn't understand how we could deliver the powerful antimicrobial that we have in such a gentle way with literally 40 times less iodine than the typical iodine solutions. So, so it's, uh, again, very high efficacy antimicrobial. Biocompatible, it's, it's, it's a, it has a natural metabolic pathway uh, as opposed to many others who are, that are not natural, that are basically chlorine-based, hypochlorous acid, silver, a variety of different competing products that aren't naturally metabolized by the body. We're effective against biofilm, which is a big problem in wound care. Uh, you, can, you can have a great antimicrobial profile, but if you can't break through that biofilm that is protecting that bacteria, you're not going to have an effective product. And we've proven that we do that. We have that pr lab, uh, proven in lab. Sustained activity, which is again important. Uh, 10 minutes to three plus days. We say three plus because we had strong sustained activity after three days of a single application. Uh, that's very important because, again, on the competing landscape, a lot of the antimicrobials are 45 seconds to two minutes, and then they're finished working. Our product, even though it's gentle and non-cytotoxic and very tissue friendly, continues to kill bacteria for three days. We've only tested the three. We believe it's up to seven. No known microbial resistance, again, when you talk about uh, C. diff and MRSA, the things that are killing people that they can't kill with traditional antibiotics and antimicrobials, uh, iodine has no known resistance to those bacteria, or there's no known resistance to iodine killing that bacteria and viruses. Anti-inflammatory, anti-odor, tissue-friendly, as we mentioned, um, and then the environmentally friendly, of course, uh, but it's, uh, that's, that may not sound important, but in areas 
in the EU that have already banned certain silver antimicrobials because of disposal issues. So we have an opening there, and silver is one of our leading competitors. Next, please. So the skin disc. Uh, we're really excited about skin disc. People that have diabetic foot ulcers or wounds that can't heal, um, many times uh, it, it will result in their amputation of their limb. A typical amputee lives five years and that's it. And it's like a death sentence. So if you can heal that wound and, and save that limb, salvage that limb, you can save lives. And so, you know, it's, it's, that's what we're in this business for. One of the things we're excited about, hope, you know, hopefully we'll make a lot of money, but, you know, we want to help people. And so what we've been able to do in 250 cases of this, of this uh, technology that we've acquired and completed the purchase of all the, uh, the, the, uh, the pending patents and the team, is a stem cell, autologous stem cell, it's from the, from the patient's own body, and we create what looks like a blob of jelly, but it can be shaped and formed and cut to fit the wound. Um, we have 250 patient case studies with 100% uh, limb salvage. And so that's an 85% success rate with a single application. And it's con if you're in the wound care arena, I don't know if anybody in here is, but Doug knows a lot about it because he studied it quite a bit over, over time. That's unbelievable, an 85% success rate, single application. The typical competing products are negative pressure wound therapies that cost two to three times more, take two to three times longer, and have anywhere from 12 to 36 to 48 to 60 dressing changes. We're talking about a single application in the OR, takes 30 minutes, and we're healing wounds that have not been able to heal. And I'll go to a case study. So we'll go to the next slide. So this is, I know these, uh, sorry we did this just before lunch, but the, uh, the, some of these wounds are just horrendous. Uh, this, this particular wound was to the bone. And these are patients that typically are diabetic. They have uh, other complications. Um, and they, they, they lack vascularization or blood flow to these areas to heal these wounds. So it's very difficult once they have this wound to get it healed. Uh, <clears throat> this particular patient had over a year with this wound with every conceivable treatment, uh, uh, treatment applied with no success. Uh, Dr. Leiden applied the wound, the um, uh, skin disc, uh, covered it with an acellular dermal tissue. Week one, you see full granulation. Week two, healing. Week four, completely healed. A patient, one year, with every conceivable wound care strategy and had been given a diagnosis of amputation of that limb by another doctor, came to Dr. Leiden four weeks. In week six, it was walking on that wound, on that heel. So next slide, please. Another patient, uh, I happen to know some history on this patient, 87-year-old patient. Not only had uh, th this, this wound g came from a basically tearing of the skin by walking by a file cabinet. Six years, this wound was open. This patient's an active chemotherapy, um, diabetic, um, COPD, multiple complications. Six years of treatment. They were unable to close this wound. This is right after the skin disc was applied. And this is approximately 12 weeks later. The wound is totally healed. It, it's literally, you know, it's, it's amazing. When you, when, you, when you understand advanced wound care and how difficult it is, this patient was given, uh, in the third year, was given, a, an, uh, given the diagnosis of amputation. Uh, continued to treat and go to different doctors and shop for somebody, please help me with this wound. So th these are the kind of things that are almost miraculous that we're seeing with skin discs. So how we, uh, we came to uh, have this technology in our arsenal is that in the skin disc they use vancomycin, which is a very powerful antibiotic. We're replacing the vancomycin and it also interferes with wound healing. We're replacing the vancomycin with our Clara solution, our Clara, Clara chemistry, to 
I believe we'll get better results than this <clears throat> and uh, also lower cost for delivery. Next. So we're also licensing. <clears throat> this requires uh, centrifuging uh, or spinning down blood products and bone marrow products to isolate platelet-rich uh, plasma, uh, fibrin, and uh, stem cells from bone marrow. So those products that you spin down are very highly technical inventions and uh, they're actually pretty cool because you can spin them down in 13 minutes you'll have isolated blood products and platelets that will be put into the skin disc to accelerate healing. So what we've done is we are, we've agreed to uh, terms and uh, we're in the final stages. We're literally, I think, days away from securing the license from uh, the exclusive global license for use of these products in the wound care industry, which blocks competitors from doing what we're doing. It also lowers our costs by about 70 to 80 percent. And uh, we, with those products come three already FDA approved technologies. Uh, and at least one of them is already approved in the EU for a wound care, in, irriga, uh, wound care indication that would allow us to go directly to the market in, in Europe. So uh, it, it probably speeds up our timeline. What do you think, Doug, a year? Yeah, six months to a year to going to market. It also blocks our competitors from having the best in class technology. And we also have a team of uh, research and development guys who are absolutely brilliant, who invented this stuff. And we're getting it from a $20 billion company that will remain unnamed until we finish this deal. We can't disclose that yet. But uh, they're focused on another area. Wound care is not their focus. So we're picking up this technology that uh, is going to be a significant improvement. Next. So when you look at our market, um, again, they're big markets. Um, you know, many tens of millions of dollars, 200% uh, when you go international. Uh, other populations have higher incidence of diabetes. One of the things we didn't mention is uh, the orthopedic market, which there's more detail that we'd be happy to share with you. But we have products in development that uh, we believe will substantially uh, change the orthopedic implant infection problem. Um, we think we can resolve many of those infections without removing the, uh, the uh, implant, which is a big, a big problem for people who had that problem. And so we've broken down the markets here, but outside North America, I, you know, our, our markets are you know, anywhere from a half a billion to north. Um, we believe we can get substantial penetration into those markets relatively quickly, two to three years, and achieve uh, a yeah, pretty substantial valuation for Clara. I got this last last slide, I think. So, great. Thanks very much. That's it for me. Uh, Biological Water, um, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Ken's on the line. Um, Biologo was created in 2014 to commercialize the AOS. Our mission is to provide the world with an affordable, eco-friendly solution, point of use, water treatment for diverse technologies. How the advanced oxidation system employs industry, empowers industry, pardon me, to conserve water, electricity, and money while treating contaminants that are not currently able to be treated by conventional technologies, micropollutants such as hormones. That's right. <clears throat> the solution, the AOS, low capex, low opex, low energy. Our AOS, the one that you'll see videos of, is running right now at about three volts, 100 milliamps. A six volt solar panel can power the whole unit. We eliminate bacteria, viruses, protozoa with extreme efficiency. It even treats hard to treat micropollutants. It is a real paradigm shift for the water treatment industry. Our market 
So our total addressable market, $44 billion. What we're targeting is much smaller. We are the first market, and we're looking at market penetration, is in the poultry industry. Agriculture. Why agriculture? Why poultry? We've been pulled. Uh, we're from Alberta, Canada, and the poultry industry it basically came to us and said, we have a problem. We have a problem in treating water. Can you help? And we said yes. Next slide. <clears throat> so Alberta is very in intensive in poultry production. Uh, there's 180 or 108 million birds processed a year in Alberta. 26 liters of water per bird, basically five gallons. $2.8 billion of fresh water used a year. Next slide. Our treatment solution is our AOS. The AOS is a very, very powerful technology. Uh, we can take poultry wastewater with high bacterial contamination, high BOD, high TSS, high TKN. We can treat it to bring it up to water reuse standards by the USDA and the EPA for their water reconditioning guidelines. And we've already done that in California, and that we presented last year. Um, the other advantage is there's huge discharge fines in, Alberta, in, in California right now, and in Alberta as well, when you discharge wastewater which has high contaminants. Um, the municipalities don't want this water, and so they basically charge you to discharge it. We eliminate those discharge charges completely. The AOS is scalability. We have two reactor designs currently, the stack version uh, in the upper left and the spiral. The spiral is our newest technology. The spiral reactor has been a quantum leap for us. It's like um, taking your normal carbon battery, which is the stack, to an ICAD battery. Um, our power consumption has dropped. Our flow rate has increased. The Reactor uh, on the, the stack reactor, the tall one there, does basically five gallons a minute. The small cartridge does 10 to 20 gallons a minute. So if you take one of those, you're doing 20 gallons a minute, you have five there, you're now at 100 gallons a minute. 100 gallons a minute is pretty much commercial for any wastewater treatment plant. Next slide. <clears throat> so this is our AOS. Um, clean water technology is a leap forward in water treatment. Uh, it's flexible, it's modular, uh, low power consumption, and it, it does work. It truly works. We have just published, uh, we're in the process of publishing four manuscripts to doc document the progress we've made in AOS in its ability to kill bacteria, kill viruses, and remove micropollutants. Uh, next slide. So the AOS, I think you've all heard that the AOS has been installed as a pilot plant uh, at Sunworks Farms. Uh, the pilot treatment train has been installed uh, to basically take raw poultry wastewater, uh, which comes from their chill tank, and it's a very bad pun, but this water is extremely foul. It is really nasty water, and um, we are able to treat it and actually meet USDA guidelines. This is the unit that we just uh, finished construction. We're really proud of this unit. It is modular, it is in a C can. We can pick this up and take it to any site. It is a complete treatment train that takes the raw water through three stages of treatment, and um, it works incredibly well. Uh, this is us uh, building the plant. Next slide. This is Jenny Boutros. Jenny, well, you'll see a video of her in just a moment. Uh, Jenny is the lead engineer and creation genius behind this technology that we're piloting right now. This is what the water looks like when it comes in. You have stock water on the left going to the coarse filtration, post-CFS, uh, skid, and then pilot at post-AOS. The AOS water is basically, at that point, has no bacteria, no viruses, and meets USDA guidelines for water reuse. This is the video, and it should come up.
here today at Sandworks Farms where our AOS treatment pilot is installed. So let us take you on a tour. Right now we're standing outside of the BioLargo water pilot plant. This unit is modular, scalable and portable so it can easily be fitted to our clients' needs. The primary purpose of this plant is to treat the water to reuse and discharge levels. This can serve three benefits to our customers. The first is that it lowers the total water consumption. The second is that the water can be reused within the plant. And the third is that it lowers the contaminant load within the sewage system and by extension lowers the funds that our customers pay. Let's go inside and see the place in action. When the wastewater gets pumped from the plant, it comes through the top of the sea can over there and into this first tote. At the inlet of the tote, we have some coarse filters that have help get rid of big particles. The water looks like this. It has some big chunks in it and it's pinkish in color. The first step in our treatment train is the coagulation and flocculation tank. Here we mix a coagulant and a flocculant with the chill tank water. This causes small clumps to form and these small clumps eventually join together to form larger clumps which are called flocks. This mixture moves through this pipe into our clarifier unit where these flocks sink to the bottom and we collect the top water which is our effluent. The effluent looks like this coming out of the clarifier. After the CFS unit, the next step in our treatment train is our filtration skid. Here the effluent water is passed through a series of filters with decreasing pore size. This removes the remaining suspended solids within the water. Last but not least, the effluent water is passed through the AOS system. On this rig we have two AOS modules. Each one has a different packing material that we're currently experimenting with to see which will work better for our clients' needs. In this step, the water undergoes disinfection, which means the bacteria within the water is inactivated. Furthermore, the AOS helps to reduce the organic load within the water. Thank you for joining us on our tour today. We would finally like to say thank you to Sunworks Farms, IRAP Program, our parent company BioLargo and sister company Blessed for their help on this project. We are very excited to finally be testing the AOS system in a real life setting where we can collect data and improve the system to increase the value for our customers. The AOS, um, well, we just saw the, the video. It is a very impressive video. Um, Sunworks has been a phenomenal partner. This is the poultry producer. He processes between two to 3,000 birds a day. And then we take that water. We are, the, our goal is to reclaim 50% of his water use and cut his water bill in half. Um, he saves a certain amount of money, and that would pay for our system. Half of what he would get would pay for our system. That's how it would work for the poultry industry. We have just finished a pilot study at the University of Alberta looking at wastewater coming from municipal districts, from EPCOR. This is the largest one, EPCOR is one of the largest waste treatment companies in Canada. Uh, they treat all the municipal waste in Alberta, in the major cities, Edmonton, Calgary. Uh, we took wastewater from the municipal wastewater from their plant. Um, this was done in collaboration with uh, Dr. Greg Goss, University of Alberta. Greg took that water, he then spiked it with two different compounds, 17 beta estradiol and benzyl alphapyrine. Benzyl alphapyrine is a very, very toxic molecule. It is a carcinogen and it is a very, very nasty molecule. Estradiol, estrogen, birth control pills. The water that we drink has a lot of estrogen in it. Why? Because the current waste treatment plants cannot remove it. The AOS was completely, it was able to completely remove it to the background levels. 
it was so impressive that even Go Dr. Goss said this is an amazing advancement for water treatment, and especially for municipal wastewater. It is a breakthrough for municipalities. And we have be just been invited to do a municipal wastewater pilot in Oregon with the Clean Water Solutions in Portland, Oregon. And we'll be setting that pilot up um, in September. It's a multi-year program. So we'll be setting up with a very small system, uh, basically our two inch reactors, the ones that you saw earlier that are currently being installed here in, in California at um, AquaCycles plant. Next slide. Our competition. So if you're looking at the different types of uh, wastewater treatment systems you have, if you compare the AOS to UV, our cap OPEX costs are significantly less and incredibly less, basically one-fifth the cost of uh, ozone. Our CAPEX costs are again one-third to one-fifth the cost of uh, UV and ozone. We remove organics, they do not. We remove bacteria, viruses, and protozoa very, very effectively. UV, uh, depending on the quality of the water, has real issues in removing your protozoa. Uh, ozone has the same issues. Sensitive to turbidity and TSS, we are not sensitive. It will impact the life of the system, but compared to the performance benefits, we outperform all of our competitors. Next slide. Uh, market traction, we have four pilots ongoing currently. The poultry pilot we just installed. We have a food and beverage pilot being set, installed, or that is installed and operational here in California. A Joshua Tree, it's a, in a microbrewery. It's in collaboration with our partner called AquaCycle. Uh, stormwater, uh, we have been received funding from the Canadian government, as Dennis mentioned, basically $200,000 uh, from the Canadian government to do a pilot in California. We have been working with different municipalities for the last six or seven months um, and have just actually um, decided we're going to do a demonstration pilot and that demonstration pilot has just been approved and it will be actually here in Westminster and we'll be installing that hopefully, looking at Randy, two weeks. <coughs> two weeks. Two weeks. You heard that, Dennis, two weeks. Yes, next Tuesday. Uh, municipal wastewater, I just finished speaking about the or municipal wastewater pilot that we've been invited to. And this is a very uh, big uh, deal. We're going head to head with two other companies um, in Oregon being sponsored by Corolla. Um, Corolla Engineering is one of the largest engineering firms in municipal wastewater. Uh, they've basically invited us. We've been working with Corolla for the last four years. Uh, and it is a really big deal for us. It demonstrates really the economic pull for the AOS. And that's, that's it. And that's the end of the show. And I'll turn it over to Dennis. Good job.